Thank you for watching my channel. Please subscribe and like. Now back to the news. It was the look that made Kay Moss famous. Pale skin, slick back hair and infamously an extremely thin physique. Now the supermodel has revealed the abuse she faced for her hair and chic aesthetic. The 50-year-old, who became the poster girl for the trend in the 90s, said that people would approach her in the street and accuse her of promoting eating disorders. She told a new Disney Plus documentary. Parents would come up to me and say, my daughter's anorexic. It was awful. I think because I was just skinny, and people weren't used to seeing skinny. But if I'd been more buxom, it wouldn't have been such a big deal. It's just that my body shape was different from the models before me. The look became popular after the then 19-year-old posed in lingerie for the June 1993 issue of Vogue. Describing the shoot with photographer Karin Day, Ms. Ma said, I just felt really good. The whole shoot, I felt really comfortable, I loved creating the images. You know, it wasn't glamorous. It was in my flat in London. Our bedroom was like a bedsit. That's the kind of fashion I liked. It was much simpler. Reflecting on the backlash to the original photo, which is now in the Victoria and Albert Museum in West London, fashion editor Catherine Castorine told the documentary. The public were not ready. They were absolutely appalled. Immediately, the pictures were completely vilified and slammed. Perhaps we'd underestimated how that look had in our minds been quite normal. Vogue editor Dame Anna Winder said. That look very undernourished looking model made people uncomfortable. Many of us at Vogue worried about hair and chic or anorexia, all the things that were associated with that look. It got to such a fever pitch. I remember physically being in the White House when the Clinton administration took the issue on. Ms. Day, who died from a brain tumor in 2010, discovered Ms. Moss at the age of 14, after seeing a Polaroid of her. She described the croydon born schoolgirl as a beauty, adding, There was also something quite ordinary about her. Her hair was a bit scraggy, and with no makeup she just looked like the girl next door. I encouraged her to be natural. I chat to her and then take the pictures in the middle of the conversation. After appearing on the cover of The Face magazine in 1990, Ms. Moss appeared in campaigns for Levi's and Calvin Klein. She sparked controversy two years later when she posed topless with then-rapper Mark Wahlberg in an advert for Calvin Klein jeans. She told the documentary. It was quite overwhelming. I was 18, you know, he was a big superstar rapper, and I still felt like I was just a girl from Croydon. They asked me to be topless. It was just a lot of people on set, a lot of men. I did feel vulnerable. Ms. Moss, who has since appeared on 30 Vogue covers, also infamously quipped that nothing tastes as good as skinny feels in 2009. She has since tried to distance herself from the comments, which were used by several pro-anorexia websites, claiming it was just a little jingle her housemate used to say. The documentary in Vogue. The 90s, which will start streaming on Friday, is a star-studded look at the fashion industry during the decade. It speaks to former Vogue editors including Edward Enenful and celebrities such as supermodel Naomi Campbell, actress Gwyneth Paltrow, and Sex and the City star Sarah Jessica Parker. It also features designer Stella McCartney, who revealed the advantage she had being the daughter of the Beatles star Paul. Describing her graduation show from Central St. Martin's Fashion School in London, Ms. McCartney recalled, All the other students were choosing their models, then they were getting their mates. I had mates, but my mates were the supermodels. I was like, everyone's gonna hate me if I do that, but life's too short, and they were genuinely my mates. Those girls were the hottest girls on the planet. They were doing every show in every city, and they did a little college fashion show, for me. That was amazing. Ms. Campbell, who took part in the show, said, I don't think anyone's ever had a graduation like that. I've never seen any graduate from St. Martin's have their collection on the front cover of every single newspaper. Ms. Moss, who also took part in the show, said, we were just hanging out in Notting Hill, going to the same bars or restaurants or whatever, and I didn't know she was a McCartney. Then I saw her driving around in a Mercedes, and I was like, she's a college. How could she afford that? Then she told me and then she asked me to do her graduate show. Ms. McCartney, 52, said that the show sparked a backlash from her fellow students, adding, As I was the child of such famous people, it became this whole drama. I was like, ag, get me out of here. She later took over at fashion house Chloe from superstar designer Karl Lagerfeld. After learning she would be his successor, Ms. McCartney claims he said, I knew they'd take a big name to fill my boots, but I thought they'd use a big name in fashion, not music. She added, Woof B. The show also features former Spice Girl Victoria Beckham, who revealed she was completely obsessed with supermodel Linda Evangelista. She added, Ms. Evangelista was the reason why I cut my hair, the reason why I dyed my hair lots of different colors. I was in New York, and I went to Garen, who was Linda's hairdresser. When he cut all my hair off. I was channeling my inner Linda. 
Posh Spice, 50, also reveals how fashion brought her and her husband, David Beckham, together. When I first met David in 1997, he'd heard that I was the Spice girl that liked the designer clothes, she said. 